Hey guys, Luke here, and we're back. Let's get straight into this. And uh, we're going to be playing against the drop team. So this is a team full of uh, players who've been dropped throughout the year. You know, the, due to various reasons. Some disciplinary, some injuries, some just plain shit. Uh, so I'll just go check what episode it actually is, what episode number. I think it's number 13. And it is number 13. Um, sorry about that. I should be a little bit more professional, but you know what, stuff it. Let's get into it. So the loading screens are taking forever. I have got uh, the team line up in front of me, but you know, be able to see the team. And I just remembered, I still uh, haven't uh, remembered to get Tony Williams out of the starting lineup and put Guerra there. Uh, but forgive me, we might put Feeder in the starting lineup, that sort of stuff. But who knows? So uh, our team, there's Brett Morris, and here comes the drop side. And you know, overall, it is a pretty okay side. Um, the back line's pretty good, I suppose. Now, the, some players uh, actually aren't in the league at the moment, or have gone overseas and all that sort of stuff, but um, they were dropped for a significant amount of time, which resulted into them leaving. So, we'll start off here. You saw the man who did the kickoff, Kevin Locke, he is the fullback. Wingers are David Williams and Nathan Merritt. Centers are Bryson Goodwin and Chris Inu. The halfback and 5'8", uh, Terry Campisi and Ben Hampton. Oh, we should just take it up to the line there a little bit. And then uh, the props are Tim Grant and Fui Fui Moi Moi. Then we have the hooker, we have Isaac DeGoyes. Second row is Tom Lero Lars. And uh, let me just see. I need to concentrate and try to score here and then I'll have a look. Oh, I thought we took it around him. Uh, and the other second row is Renan Matua and the locks are Remy Casti. Nice little run there from Thurston. What a play here, sir. And the bench is George Rose, Clint Newton, Jason King, and Conrad Harrell. Now, Harrell was originally in the starting side, but I thought David Williams would be a better fit because he's more of a reserve grader at this stage. I mean, he's not even playing at the moment. Um, but yeah. So we're going to the reasons for it, um, or why they got dropped or whatever. So Kevin Locke, pretty much, uh, I think he's been a bit pissed off. He's went and signed with uh, Salford in the Super League for big money. Um, but the reason for doing that is because uh, he has Sam Tompkins in front of him at the Warriors, which, you know, I think it's kind of a, it was a weird decision at the start of the year. It's paid off, sort of, because I think um, Tompkins is a better player. But um, Kevin Locke probably should have been given a shot at um, at, at least, like, um, halfback or 5'8 or something. Damn it, we couldn't get the pass off. Yeah, so Kevin Locke found himself in reserve grade. He also had injuries and stuff as well, but um, I think the best he got to was a spot on the bench, and he wasn't happy with that. And uh, yeah, he left. Um, didn't want to play reserve grade as like why would a, he was playing for New Zealand like just a few months before that? Why would he want to play reserve grade? Um, there's a few players who were playing for New Zealand not so long ago. Um, yeah, so we go into David Williams. He's a former Australian uh, international. I'm a New South Wales player. Um, he's found himself in reserve grade. I mean, he's the whole um, what was it? It wasn't drugs, nothing. It was uh, gambling, wasn't it? I think it was gambling. Uh, he got suspended for the rest of the season, but either way, he was not going to be playing um, for Manly, and that was a great try there. We have Peter Hiku, or Peter Hiku, however you pronounce it, and uh, George Tifoi in front of him, and they even opted for. People like Chase Blair and Clinton Gutherson ahead of him, so he was like fifth down the line of wingers at Manly. So I, I don't expect him to be there next year. They've got enough depth to cover like all those positions, so I can't see David Williams sticking around at Manly uh, much longer. Uh, probably not even in, in a role because, frankly, he's the last game that I remember. I know it's not his um, last game that he's played, but the last game that I remember, what well, maybe it is, it was the grand final, and he was absolutely terrible. Didn't mean to go to him, but it's worked out alright. Uh, that was English I was talking about. Um, yeah, so we're going to the centres, which is uh, Goodwin. We'll start off with him. Now, Goodwin, he played in the World Cup. or well, both of the centres were in the New Zealand squad for the World Cup. But Goodwin actually played. Um, and, you know what? It, he's one of those plays where he, both of these guys, both the centres, both him and um, Inu, both lads who... Um, have the tendency to be rocks and diamonds, and in um, Goodwin is a pretty good defender when he's on, but like when he's off, he's a shocking defender. Like he's so bad sometimes. Um, and I think he was a victim of just shit defense this year. Last year he was good in defense, 
this year, not so good. Um, and Arvea came in, they found him, and they found a new winger, oh sorry, a new center, and yeah. No more Goodwin. I'm not sure if he'll be sticking around at Rabbitohs for any longer than this year, but have to wait and see. That moves on to Inu, who's already left the Bulldogs. Uh, a little bit mixed feelings about this as a Bulldog supporter, but um, in terms of his playing ability, he definitely, like his actual talent-wise, talent-wise, he's as good. He could be as good as Jared Hayne and all that, but I don't know. He just can't put it together, and now he's finding himself playing rugby union in Paris. Not the worst thing that could have happened to him. Uh, definitely, probably a good thing to happen. Um, going to stay in Paris, stuff like that. I saw him have a picture with David Louise, so that's kind of cool. Oh, that's what an offload. It's another good one. I thought we could have pushed off that tackle with uh, Surges, Sam Burgess. So we could have pushed off another pass there. Yeah, so you know, um, just has Lafayette and Morris in front of him, and then the wing spots. He Des has a mustn't think he's a winger because he didn't even really try him at the wing. Moves us on to Nathan Merritt, who's you know kind of a strange one because there's a few Rabbitohs in this side, but I thought Nathan Merritt would be someone who they'd never really drop, no matter how bad he played, and they did. And you know, luckily enough for them, they they had the luxury to do that. This Johnson kid is very good, very very good, probably better than Merritt at this stage, like better than Merritt's peak, like. It, Merritt was a consistent performer, but this Jolton kid looks so good. Um, and you know, he had big raps from him beforehand, so it's not any surprise. And there's a try for Brad Radra. Um, yeah, so Merritt played for New South Wales just last year, I think, or was it the year before? I think it was last year, and he was terrible. And then not so much long, uh, not long later, he's uh, been dropped to reserve grade. He's been playing fullback and wing and a little bit of everywhere. Last time we saw him, he played fullback uh, during the State of Origin time for the Rabbitohs, but that's the last time I remember seeing him. Maybe he's played before then. Maybe he's played after then, sorry, but I can't think of it. They've gone with Lottie Dekiri over him, so that says it all. Moves on to the halves. So we've got Terry Campisi and Ben Hampton. Campisi, it's been a long time coming. I think he should have been dropped ages ago. Should give some new guys a chance. You can throw him a crane with him. He should be dropped, but he's not dropped. He's off the bench at this stage. But yeah, Ken Peasy, just too slow, just too old. Too m the injury's taken a toll. Um, yeah, just in his prime, a very good player. Right now, not so much. Damn it, couldn't have scored. Oh, well, it's half-time, we're up 12-0. Then we'll move on to uh, Ben Hampton, while well, he's gone off half-time. Um, yeah, so Ben Hampton started off the year in first grade. Has, has a few um, people up against him, Job Romolo, Ben Roberts. Um, Cody Walker, Cody Walker's um, left to the Rabbitohs, Joel Romley still playing reserve grade, and Ben Rowlitz, um has taken over Hampton. Hampton, um, um, I mean, he played a few good games, there was a time where Ben Roberts and Ben Hampton were the halves and they beat Manly, and it was a really good performance by them, but I just think, I don't know, he's just too young and his defence isn't quite up to scratch yet and his decision making isn't that good either. Whereas Ben Roberts, his decision making might not be good a lot of the times, but uh, at least his defense is pretty um, pretty good. And he offers something different. Um, where Hampton's young and inexperienced and stuff. So yeah, the Hamptons found himself in reserve grade, but I believe he's re-signed with them, so I don't think he'll be there for that long. Um, yeah. So we move on to Tim Grant, but what a fall this dude's had. Playing State of Origin two years ago, one of the best props in the game, and he has signed with the Rabbitohs, so you probably go back to um, being a great player next year. I just think they've managed you quite poorly uh, at Panthers, but what can you do? But yeah, this dude was one of the most damaging runners in the game. Um, really good prop, and then he finds himself in reserve grade, and I'm not sure why, to be exact. I don't think he's playing that bad, and I don't particularly think that the props that uh, Panthers have are that much better than him or anything. So it's a little bit of a strange one, but you know, you just gotta cop it. And Grant's moved on. I think it was more, probably more the fact that they wanted to get rid of him. Uh, uh oh. They wanted to get rid of him. He signed with another team and then they don't want him to just play awesome and then go to another team. So yeah, that's probably the reason why. Just a little bit of their own pride. Probably getting in the way of the team. Yeah, whatever. So De Goyes, you might be thinking, he's playing for the Eels right now, but the reason he uh, went to the Eels is because he was playing reserve grade. Michael Leacher was in front of him. I think so was John Morris. Uh, people like that. So, 
Yeah, Degoy's found himself in reserve grade. He is a pretty good, pretty decent player, but um, yeah, when he was first at the Sharks, he was a good player, and I thought this kid's pretty good. Moved to Knights, went shit. Moved back to Sharks, went shit. Now he's going to the Eels, and he's playing pretty okay. So yeah, he's showing that he's a decent player, but he was in reserve grade at the start of the year. Then we got Prop Fu for you, Moi Moi. Probably his, I think it's his last year. I don't know if he's officially retired, but most likely be, it's his last year in the NRL, I would say. Last year for Eels, definitely. Um, I think it's been announced already. Um, yeah, just, you know, he's been a pretty good performer, but he's just old. Like, he's like 35 or something. And they've got some really good youngsters coming through the Eels and props. Like, you look at the Pauli Paulies and stuff like that. Like, some pretty good players. Uh, they still got Lee Moss up there. He's another prop. Oh, I thought I was going to hit intercepted there for a sec. Yeah, Moi Moi just doesn't doesn't have enough. Like people still expect him to be the the dude he was in like 2009. He was old in 2009. Imagine what he's like now. His body just giving out on him. And that should be six to go. Oh, what the hell! I pressed pass ages ago. Then he gets up and passes it. Wow. Anyways, so you're going to the second row. Tom Lero Lars just must have had a blue of Ricky Stewart. I'm not sure why. He would be in reserve grade. I know he's injured now, but he might not be the best player, but I think he's good enough to be in the Raiders side, let's be honest. Um, although he's moving to the Storm next year, so a new start for him under a great coach in Craig Bellamy in comparison to Rick Stewart. So it's just interesting to see how Lee Ray Lars goes next year, but he's been in reserve grade, so he's in the side. Uh, we've got Rennie Matua, who, I mean, it's a bit debatable whether he should be in this side or not. Uh, he was always signed to... Oh, shoot, is he going to get to it? Uh, Brennan Matua was always signed as probably like a reserve grade player for the Bulldogs, but he was playing with the Eels um, in their starting side last year, so a bit of a drop down. He is getting on the bench now these days, but um, still a bit of a let down from where he's been in the last few years. Although it's not his lowest point, that's for sure. So yeah, Renny Matua is the number 12, and then we go into Remy Casti at lock. Who, uh, I put him at lock because I saw him playing lock in reserve grade a few weeks ago, uh, or at least to the big league. So, uh, yeah, he signed from Catalan's Dragons. He was in an episode, like the last episode as well, uh, for worst signings. He wouldn't have signed for cheap, or maybe he would have, I don't know. But he's moved countries and all that, um, and he's barely played. Although when he has played, he's been pretty impressive to me, I thought. But uh, maybe it's just the language barrier, I don't know, because he's French. So that could be a reason. But, yeah, he's played a fair bit of reserve grade this year. Then we move to the bench, George Rose. Now, he was struggling to find a club anyways, um, and Melbourne sort of offered him a lifeline, and he hasn't really repaid them. He's still fat. Uh, if if he would just lose some weight, like, he could be anything, um, Georgie. Like, he's got a pretty good stamina as it is, like, as a fat dude. And oh, let's go for a chip and chase. Oh, there's no fullback there. Whatever. Nice try there. Sean Johnson. Too fast. Yeah, like, George Rose, he could be anything. He's got great ball skills. Um, he's pretty fit as a fat dude. He's got decent pace. Like, he's pretty good as a fat dude. Imagine what he could be if he was skinny. Well, not skinny, but like a fit. That's what I'm looking for. But I just think he's probably one of those players who never will be fit. Just how he is. Um, unfortunate, but yeah. He's going to be stuck in reserve grade at the Storm, if he even stays at the Storm. I remember after like a few games, he got dropped out of uh, the Storm first grade side. And they were talking about him leaving to like Eels or something. Which he hasn't ended up going to. Probably a good move for the Eels, but yeah. Then we got Clint Newton, who I'm not sure why they would sign him, but I think he went from Panthers to the Knights. And he hasn't really played too much first grade. I think he'd been injured for a little bit, but um, yeah, he probably should have. Uh, they should have avoided his signing. Well, that was a shit kick, whatever. And then Jason King, he's found himself on the outer at Manly. Obviously, he's retiring at the end of the year, but. Whenever there's, they have a fit side, he's uh, not in the side. I don't know if he's exactly played reserve grade, but um, he just hasn't been getting picked. He's been 18th man or so. They go with Hassan and Louie and all those sort of players over him. So, yeah. And then the last player is Conrad Hurrell. Now, you might be saying he's playing first grade right now, but side of the year, Elliot kept dropping him due to being fat and stuff like that, disciplinary reasons. Um, yeah, so that's why he's in the side. He's definitely not a reserve grader, but um, he has been playing reserve grade. So that's the end of the episode, guys. I'd like to see, is, is there anybody that I missed who's playing reserve grade? Maybe even some uh, Super League guys. Be, be able to leave them in, uh, put them in the comments, sorry. Anyone who has been dropped or 
had a big drop um, from playing like rep football, and now he's not even in the side. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed the episode. Uh, leave, leave a like and uh, subscribe to the channel, and hopefully I'll see you uh, next time there's a video out, which I'm not sure who we're going to be taking uh, on, but should be a good one. See you next time. Bye.